you mugs. Ah, uh, I mean gentlemen. Well, well, it's Laurel and Hardy, as if I didn't know. Hello, boys, this is Pete Smith, as if you didn't know. Say, I'd like your help here for a minute. Do you mind? No, of course not. I just want you lads to show the audience how much wood the average person tows. Wood? Got any? No, like most guys, you don't realize how many articles made of wood products you carry around. For instance, that newspaper. Yup, that newspaper is largely made of trees, wood pulp. Of course, most people know that, but many people don't know that a lot of other objects come from a wood base. Take Stan's glasses. The rims are plastic. About 60% of plastic is wood flour. Powdered wood, my friend. Got a fountain pen? Just as I thought, plastic barrel. Okay, gents, anything else in your pocket? Be careful of fish hooks, Stan. A billfold. Imitation leather made with cellulose acetate, a wood product. Uh-oh, what's up? Why, Mr. Laurel. Oh, sure, your wife, of course. Anyway, they're rayon, another wood product. Well, what else, boys? A cigarette case? A plastic. Also, a cigarette holder. More plastic. Any more wood, my lad? No, but there's wood in his hat. The sweatband. Right, more imitation leather. A new spring hat, eh? Ouch. More? Yup. A pipe, the bowl of which is wood. The stem, plastic. Book matches. These matches are wood pulp. So is the cover. It's amazing the amount of wood we use. Ain't it the truth? And now a pen knife. The handle, plastic. Let's see what's in the suitcase, boys. The suitcase, do you mind? That's it. Let's see what we have here. Any slippers? Yes, here we are. They're real leather like your shoes and belts, but tanned and made durable by tan bark from the forest. Then, too, the counters and insoles are wood fiber. Okay, Ollie, let's proceed. Wood in bottles? Well, hardy. Uh, hardly. No pun intended. Anyway, witch hazel and cascara are just two of several hundred drugs and remedies from trees. Next, an imitation leather toilet case. Mirror with plastic back. Brush back is plastic. Bristles of both brushes are cellulose plastic. This bottle top is plastic. So is soap container. That sponge is cellulose plastic, and I'm not at all surprised. Hey, Stan, what else you got? Come, come, fellas, don't tell me you're running out of plastic. Let's take a look at some more of your junk. Ah, uh, I mean your nice thing. Ah, a razor. Handle as plastic as are most electric shavers. Ouch, that blade ain't no plastic, bub. And now, writing paper. Scratch pads. Envelopes. And book. All wood pulp, kitty. Pajamas are rayon, and rayon is a wood product, remember? Hey, what you got there, chum? Oh, sure, say. More rayon. But damn, such color. <laughs> and now, a shirt. Tie. And socks. All rayon. Say, the suitcase. Yup, even that's made out of laminated wood covered with canvas. And it's a good thing these lads didn't come around here with a truck. We'd be here for days. Oh, boy. You can go now. Goodbye, Stan. So long, Oliver. And thanks very much, guys. Darn nice of you to help. Hey! Oh, well, they need exercise anyway. Goodbye now. And thanks to you, Pete Smith, this is Lee Vickers carrying on. Well, Laurel and Hardy little realized the importance of wood to their daily lives. And I wonder if most of us know just how important forests and research are to the winning of this war. The answer may be found at Madison, Wisconsin, where the United States Forest Service maintains its forest products laboratory. Here, for years, has been carried on a broad program of research to increase uses of forest products and find new uses for waste materials. Years where they figuratively put the tree in a test tube. 